This is five on your side at four, focused on you. Right now at four, extreme heat has taken over the bi-state. The St. Louis area baking under a heat advisory as we go on the air at four. Temperatures reached 102 degrees around three this afternoon, tying a record from 1988. With the humidity, it feels even hotter. Thanks for being here at four. I'm Kay Quinn. Brent Solomon is on assignment. That heat advisory continues until eight o'clock tonight. That's when we could see a little bit of relief. But in the meantime, take some precautions to stay healthy in these high temperatures. Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking a cold front that could bring some storms to the bi-state. Scott? You know, Kay, it's a very complicated scenario playing out across the bi-state region right now. You look up into Springfield, Illinois, 77 degrees, while in St. Louis right now at 100 and one degrees and you go just north and northeast of St. Louis. We have a boundary sliding in. That's why Alton and Edwardsville have backed off into the 80s. So there is some relief trying to come our way from the northeast at this point. So there are two concerns that we're dealing with heat and storms. First, the heat index for most of us is around 105 or a little better than that, except for the areas behind this outflow boundary off to the north and northeast of St. Louis. There are some spot showers and storms now and we think later tonight into early tomorrow morning, a better chance for more widespread showers and thunderstorms. There's the latest heat index values. Northeast of St. Louis, you have a bit of a break. Most of the metro down to the south and southwest, it's still pretty brutal. Look at this boundary here that's coming into the metro area. We still have the severe thunderstorm watch in effect for Greene County, McCoupin, Montgomery County, Fayette, and Clay Counties in Illinois. But as we look in this line, this little thin line sliding in from the northeast, moving towards the southwest, behind that we try to see a few showers and thunderstorms get going, but most of the action still remains to our north. The storm up around Pittsfield has lost some of its intensity right now, but as this boundary slides through St. Louis, you can expect a good 10 degree drop in temperatures over the next hour or so if you can get on the other side of that boundary and perhaps we get a few scattered thunderstorms as we head through the next few hours. Most of our rain holds off until later tonight. We'll track that and the potential for severe weather that it may bring along with the relief in a few minutes. Kay. See you then. Thank you, Scott. Well, we know these high temperatures will come and go during the summer months. Today, local leaders came together to find solutions for people to survive extreme heat. Five on your side's Annie Crawl was downtown as 800 donated air conditioning units were loaded onto trucks. She's here now in studio with more. Annie? Okay, the dangers of temperatures this high, which can shut down air conditioners, was one of the biggest takeaways from this morning's gathering with Ameren, Missouri. Organizations like the Urban League, the St. Louis County Housing Authority, and of course, first responders all swap stories about the recent stretch of suffocating heat. The St. Louis Fire Department telling us they responded to a call in North City just last night for two elderly and disabled women. Their home was at 95, 94 degrees rather. This was at 11 o'clock on Monday night and it was hotter inside than it was outside. The women's air conditioning had been broken since Saturday, emphasizing for local leaders why more energy efficient air conditioners are critical for vulnerable individuals. But we asked Missouri Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe if the 800 units donated by Ameren will be enough. Likely not. Every year we see the need for more and uh, folks can go to their Commerce Bank and make a donation to cool down St. Louis and provide some resources to help us acquire more. A lot of people have the air conditioners in their home that are older, don't work, or they are very inefficient. On average, Ameren tells us these energy efficient air conditioners cost less than a dollar a day to operate. If you're an older adult, someone with disabilities, or a low income family in need of air conditioning, you're encouraged to contact Cool Down St. Louis, okay? All right, thank you, Annie. The extreme heat can put everyone at risk, especially those who work outside, including first responders. According to the CDC, people who work in dangerous heat may be at risk for heat stress. It's a condition that can lead to heat related illness like heat stroke or heat exhaustion. St. Louis Fire Department says they've had incidents where firefighters have passed out after pushing themselves too hard in order to avoid that. They meet every morning to see how many additional crews will be needed that day. If we're on a house fire, we call for additional resources because we know we need to rest, recover before we re-enter the work cycle. So we encourage folks to do that. If you've got to work outside, be smart about it, right? Limit the time that you're going, going, going. Make sure that you rest and rehab. 
Firefighters also give each other reminders to take plenty of breaks and drink water while working in these high temperatures. Now, if you have to spend time outside in the heat, keep these safety tips in mind. Drink plenty of water, take breaks in the air conditioning, wear light colored, loose fitting clothing, never leave pets or kids in cars unattended, and be sure to check on those living without AC. For a list of cooling centers and other heat relief tips and resources, text the word heat to 314-425-5355. We'll send you a link. Hours ago, we learned a former St. Louis principal will serve two life sentences in the murder for hire killing of his pregnant girlfriend. Cornelius Green admitted to hiring a friend to kill Jocelyn Peters in 2016. She was pregnant with his baby at the time. Green was principal at Carlane Middle School. Today in court, we learned Green used stolen money from the school to pay the hitman. Five Your Side's Holden Kerwicki spoke with Peters' family after the sentencing. Hear their reaction tonight on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. Hours ago, the U.S. Surgeon General announced the leading cause of death among children and teens is no longer medical. Today, he declared gun violence an urgent public health crisis. Laura Aguirre reports on the Surgeon General's quest to find solutions to the growing problem. Gun violence is a public health crisis in America. A new advisory from the U.S. Surgeon General is, for the first time, focusing on firearm violence as a top threat to the health of our nation, most profoundly so when it comes to young people. We have now reached the point where gun violence is the leading cause of death among kids and teens. Studies in the U.S. show children 19 and under are more likely to die from a gun than any other cause. An analysis of unintentional firearm deaths among that age group finds that more than half happen in the child's own home, most often related to improper storage and leaving firearms unlocked or loaded. Half of our kids are worried about a shooting in their school. Mass shootings make up about 1% of gun deaths, but incidents are rising, according to the Surgeon General's advisory. And they've dramatically changed the way children experience their school years. Active shooter drills have become commonplace, and some schools, like this one in Rockland, California, train kids as young as early elementary age on how to stop a wound from bleeding out. You could save somebody's life. How does that make you feel? Amazing. I love that word, amazing, you're right. Makes you feel amazing. The Surgeon General's advisory calls for changes like more effective gun laws, safe storage requirements, an assault weapons ban, and universal background checks. My hope is, is that we can actually take it out of the realm of politics and put it into the realm of public health, which is where it belongs. I'm Laura Aguirre for Five on Your Side. Five on Your Side's Justina Coronel is getting local reaction to the Surgeon General's public health advisory. Look for her reports tonight on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. That not-so-little bear cub is on the move where he was spotted right around the lunch hour. Our area is welcoming, welcoming more immigrants now than in the past 30 years. How you can help make them feel at home. Two St. Louis favorites making plans to perform on the very same stage. Where you can get tickets to see Wayno with the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. And we want to remind you to join Five on Your Side as we celebrate Pride Month. The St. Louis Grand Pride Parade starts at noon this Sunday, June 30th at Market and 10th Street. It runs down Market Street to 16th. If you can't make it downtown, we'll stream the parade live on 5 Plus on your Apple, Roku, or Fire TV.